Today's rite of passage between presidents can sometimes go smoothly and other times not so much. CBS News correspondent Thalia Asuras takes a look back at previous transitions. I, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Historically, some transitions have been, well, ugly. Historian Douglas Brinkley describes the changeover from President Harry Truman to Dwight D. Eisenhower. The two men just despised each other. And Truman said that Ike knows nothing about life. He's like a pig uh, at a Sunday service. Hi, Jimmy Carter. But there have also been moments of grace. The great moment was when uh, Jimmy Carter replaced Gerald Ford. I want to thank my predecessor. And at that inaugural, he turned around and thanked Gerald Ford for healing the nation. And as Carter was departing, he offered Ronald Reagan what he considered helpful insight. Carter uh, was trying to tell Ronald Reagan how difficult it was as president, how you had to get up at 6 a.m. and get NSC briefings and CIA reports. And Reagan just chuckled at Carter and said, I'm not getting up before 9 a.m. Better vibes, says historian Brinkley, occur in a handoff between chiefs of the same party. Ronald Reagan hands the baton over to uh, the, the incoming Bush administration. They had all worked together before, so it's a much simpler transition. Which might explain that tension in the transition from the Bill Clinton administration to Bush too, fueled by reports of Clintonites removing the W's off of White House computer keyboards. And I think it's stuck because Bill Clinton did the pardons, which became controversial plus the so-called looting of the White House, and the combo of it really angered the American people. So this time around? I think it'll become known as a, a famous transition for the friendliness of it. I say this by, because of the early signs that they see this as a historic moment. A moment yet to be written. Thalia Asuras, CBS News, Washington. Today's meeting between Mrs. Bush and Mrs. Obama will be the future First Lady's first chance to get a good look at the executive mansion. Joining us this morning from the White House, our old friend, Anita McBride, Chief of Staff to Mrs. Bush. Good morning, Anita. Good morning, Maggie. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being on, as always. So I want the inside scoop. What will Mrs. Bush mm -hmm. do for Mrs. Obama today? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, she'll give her a tour of the White House residence so that she can see where their family will be living and I think most important, she will assure Mrs. Obama that this is a wonderful place to raise a family. And she could feel very secure about her children growing up here. When Mrs. Bush came to the White House, Mrs. Clinton held a tea for her. Will there be any mm -hmm. beverages or food served? And mm -hmm. if so, what, what will it be? I think that they will have, at this time in the afternoon, we're expecting 2 to 2.30, they'll probably have some coffee or tea together and have a social visit and then tour around uh, the residence. And Mrs. Bush is, of course, happy to share with Mrs. Obama any um, guidance or advice that she may want. What do you think will make Mrs. Obama go wow when she sees it? I think, well, uh, for all of us, every time we walk into the residence, no matter how many times you come here, you realize just how beautiful it is and the historic nature that you feel immediately when you walk in of all of those that have preceded you and then of course your temporary custodianship how important that that will be i think that she will see it as a magnificent house and one that's incredibly historic particularly when you're looking outside the yellow oval room to the washington monument and the jefferson memorial it's quite a majestic sight Anita, is there one master bedroom, one room with bigger mm -hmm. closets and a nicer <laughs> bathroom, or are they pretty much all like that? Well, the uh, first family's living quarters, uh, although it's, it's considered an apartment and uh, not terribly large, but certainly sufficient to be comfortable, a, a lovely uh, a bedroom for the uh, president and first lady, and then, of course, the special part, which we know will be important to Mrs. Obama, is the bedroom for her two little girls. And Mrs. Bush shared that with her last week. It's an historic room for where Caroline and John Kennedy were, where the Johnson girls were, Amy Carter, and Jenna and, and Barbara, Chelsea, hmm. all were in those rooms. So I think that she'll be very happy what she sees where her daughters will live. Anita McBride, thank you for your time. Thank you, Maggie. <laughs>